So now to my exclusive interview with the vice president, starting with that meeting at the White House. I know you just came from lunch with the president at the White House, and he has another meeting coming up this afternoon right. with Rod Rosenstein and Christopher Wray. What do you expect will happen there? Do you have any insight to that? Well, with the revelations that our campaign may have been the subject of surveillance by the FBI, the president, I think, is uh, grateful that the Department of Justice is going to have the inspector general look into it and determine and ensure that uh, there was no surveillance done for political purposes uh, against our campaign. I think it would be very troubling to millions of Americans if that took place, but we're very confident that as the Inspector General has been doing their work looking at the conduct of the FBI during that period that uh, by adding uh, their focus to this that we'll get to the bottom of it because the American people have a right to know. So is there any suggestion that there'll be a second special counsel that would be dedicated to that endeavor? Well, I think at this point uh, the Department of Justice has made it clear that they'll be expanding the Inspector General's current mm -hmm. investigation to include these allegations. And, you know, we don't know what happened. We read the press reports, but it's all very troubling. Uh, it's all very troubling to those of us that, that hold the FBI in such high regard that there are even allegations that people were assigned to surveil or even spy on our uh, campaign. But look, uh, the inspector general has the resources to get to the bottom of it. He's been working on a major report about the FBI's conduct. And by expanding into this role, we're very confident that uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. We'll find out what happened. And the American people and all of us will have the facts. Obviously, on the Hill, they've been very frustrated with the information that they've been getting from the Department of Justice. The president has the ability to declassify those reports so that they come through unredacted, so that there's better transparency. Will he do that? Well, President Trump really believes that it's important that we provide the accountable committees on Capitol Hill with all the information that is necessary to do their work. Uh, and uh, I know that the Department of Justice has assigned additional personnel to focus on that, to work through uh, th that, those documents and that information. And, uh, and we'll continue to look forward to the Department of Justice now, providing that information. Gates, Matt Gates saying the president must declassify those documents. He has the authority to do so. Do you believe he will? Well, it'll be the president's decision to determine what he declassifies and what he doesn't, but uh, the, the principle here that the American people have a right to know what happened, the, the, the People's Congress ought to have the ability to review those materials in a timely way is a principle that we adhere to in this White House. One of the pundits on the Sunday show said, you know, this is becoming a blue-red fight and that the president likes it that way. Do you, do you think that's true? Well, no, I think, I think the American people, uh, the American people, uh, understand that when it comes to um, the Department of Justice, when it comes to the FBI, that, that we have thousands of men and women who each and every day uh, are, are dedicated to enforcing the laws and protecting our families and protecting our country. But the American people also have a sense, as we all do, that things went awry in 2016, and we need to know what happened. We need to get to the bottom of the facts. You got some heat when you went on some of the Sunday shows for saying that this needs to be wrapped up. They compared your comments to Richard Nixon talking about Watergate and saying that all the documents had been given and that it needs to be wrapped up. What do you say to that? And also now Rudy Giuliani is saying that he believes it will be wrapped up on September 1. Well, I, I, I was asked what I thought of the investigation. I said that we have fully cooperated in this investigation. As I said, over a million documents have been provided. And I just said for the sake of the country. And I think it's time that the special counsel wrap it up. And, and I think that's probably an opinion widely shared by people all across America. That the, the truth is it's been now more than a year uh, the special counsel has a team around them that's been then looking into all of the allegations here. And with the full cooperation of the White House, they've been able to assemble the facts. And I continue to hope and to say very respectfully uh, that uh, the special counsel ought to, with all deliberate means, uh, complete their work uh, and provide 
uh, the information uh, to their leadership at the Department of Justice that will come from this investigation so that we can just simply move on as a country. All right, let's turn to some of that, that progress. North Korea, a meeting tomorrow with the leader of South Korea, President right. Moon, will happen. Um, is this summit with North Korea on June 12th going to happen? Well, as the president often says, Martha, we'll see. And what I can tell you is that from the early days of this administration, President Trump made it clear that this time, in this administration, it would be different from prior administrations, where North Korea found a way to get concessions from the United States and from countries in the West in exchange for illusory promises about abandoning their nuclear weapons program. President Trump from early on initiated what we call the extreme pressure campaign. He marshaled the resources of the world community to bring economic and diplomatic pressure to bear while keeping all options on the table to achieve the objective of a nuclear-free Korean peninsula. We've stayed on that present course and heading. We've never wavered from it. But when Kim Jong-un, through the South Koreans, reached out and said that he would suspend his nuclear testing, suspend his ballistic testing, and be willing to uh, achieve complete denuclearization through talks, in exchange for a meeting with President Trump, this president readily said yes. They asked for the meeting, and uh, we continue to be open to it. But, but uh, rest assured uh, that uh, the United States will continue on the path that we are on because this president has made it clear that we will not tolerate North Korea possessing nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles that threaten the United States and our allies. Is that process of denuclearization something that could happen over time in stages? Well, what the president's made clear is that we need complete and verifiable and irreversible denuclearization. And there's opportunities and, and benefits for North Korea once we reach that point of no return. Once we reach the point where, where as they dismantle their nuclear weapons program with proper verification and, and full transparency, that then President Trump has already organized support from Japan, from South Korea, from other nations in the region, including China, to, to organize the resources that would create a brighter future for the Kim regime, a brighter future, more importantly, for the people of North Korea. But it, it all begins with North Korea committing to complete denuclearization, taking concrete steps to achieve that. All right. So, you know, it, when you came out of lunch today with the president, was it your feeling, I think this summit's going to happen in June? Well, like I said, I think that in our discussions with leaders in the Congress, and the president spoke with President Moon this weekend, who will welcome to the White House tomorrow, that our posture is we continue to be open. Mm -hmm. We continue to be open to achieving denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula by peaceable means. But there are some reports that the president is concerned that if it fails or it doesn't go well, it could be very embarrassing to have gone this far down the road and that he's seeking input as to whether or not we should maybe rethink this whole thing. Well, I, I, I don't think President Trump is thinking about uh, public relations. He's thinking about peace. He's thinking about how we achieve what has eluded successive American administration. I mean, truthfully, the Clinton administration, even the Bush administration, got played in the past. Uh, we offered concessions to the North Korean regime in exchange for promises to end their nuclear weapons program, only to see them break those promises and abandon them. Uh, it would be a great mistake for Kim Jong-un to think he could play Donald Trump. Uh, so clearly uh, the president's still willing to walk away. Well, there's, there's no question. But, but look, it's, um, we hope for better. Right. We, really, we really hope that Kim Jong-un will, will uh, seize the opportunity to dismantle his nuclear weapons program and, and, and do so by peaceable means. You know, there was some talk about the Libyan model right. last week. And... Um, you know, as the president made clear, um, you know, this, uh, this will only end like the Libyan model ended if Kim Jong-un doesn't make a deal. Some people saw that as a threat. Well, I, I think it's more of a fact. I mean, President Trump made it clear the United States of America, under his leadership, 
is not going to tolerate the regime in North Korea possessing nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles that threaten the United States and our allies. And we've made it clear that we are continuing to bring economic and diplomatic pressure to bear on North Korea, that, with, that all options are on the table to achieve that end. But that being said, we've seen great progress in recent months, last month's inter-Korean summit, where you saw the leaders in the North and South meet at the Blue House, have that discussion. The reality is that we hope for a peaceable solution. The president remains open to a summit taking place, and we'll continue to pursue that path even while we stand strong on the objective of denuclearization and the extreme pressure campaign that's underway today. Yeah, I mean, if it doesn't happen, the military option is, is basically back on the table. Well, it never came off, Martha. The truth is that President Trump has made it clear that, that this administration will not tolerate uh, the regime in North Korea possessing nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles that threaten our people, uh, that threaten the United States of America, that threaten our allies in the region. But we'll continue, to, we'll continue to tomorrow. be open to the diplomatic path, and that'll be much of the discussion tomorrow with President Moon.